My name's Prue McRae and I've got a great technique to show you today. Now, jewellery is not just about what it looks like, it's what it feels like as well. So sometimes when you're doing your kumihimo with beaded kumihimo with larger beads or very round beads, you might find that when you finish the braid, it just doesn't really feel quite right. It feels a bit kind of squishy. Sometimes when you squeeze it, the beads might stay in. That's not what you want at all. You'll find it happens mainly with size six beads, particularly the ones with very rounded size, sides. And you'll find also, particularly with gemstones, uh, sort of four millimeter gemstones, which look so beautiful in Kumihimo. I love the look of these braids, but I don't actually like the feel of them. They, they, they're compressed. When I roll them in my hands, they squish in. This braid, however, feels lovely. Still got all the flexibility I want, but none of that squishiness. And that's because I have braided around a core. Now, what we're going to do today is braid around a core using round braid on the round disc. You may, may also have come across it called Congo Gumi. So we're going to use the round disc and the round braid structure. And if you're not sure about that, please check one of my other videos about it. Now with round braid, there is actually a hollow center. When you braid just with cords, that hollow center is closed up. But once you start to add beads, particularly when you have beads on all eight cords, the centre is opened up. With a size 8 bead, that's fine. The braid can still support its own structure. But once you get above that, you can start to have problems. Not all the time. You may use long magatamas with their quirky shape and they fit in very neatly. Or gemstone chips. They can be large, but they fit together very neatly. It's the very round ones you want to watch out for. Sometimes you can cause, stop this problem by using a thicker cord or doubling up on your cords. But that's only if you've got a big hole in the, in the bead. And so that's not always going to be possible. Using a core is the perfect solution. And that core can be anything. I'm going to show it using satin cord because that's what I have a lot of to hand. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use two millimeter satin cord and I'm going to be using size six beads. If you're using larger beads, you would need a larger core. That core can be anything. It can be string. It can be several cords made up to fill up that space. So a little bit of trial and error might be necessary if you're having problems with a particular bead. But what I'm going to show you is how to get it right with size six beads and a two millimeter core. And then that will set you on your way so you can experiment with other things. So let's get going. So what you need to do is take your core cord and your eight Eslon cords, tie them in a knot, an overhand knot, and you just put the cords onto the disc as you would normally. So on either side of the dots in the north, south, east and west position. I've got a few beads on as well because I'm going to show you how to do it with beads. And I'm going for a stripe pattern here. So I've got one colour opposite the other colour. So now your cords are in position and your core is hanging loose. What I like to do is make the action with the core part of the braiding rhythm. So what I do is I start by just putting the core on that bottom dot. It doesn't go into a slot, it just sits there. And I actually put my thumb on it. And what I need to make sure is that when I do my up and, up and down moves, I have the top down move on the right hand side of the core and the bottom up move on the left hand side of the core. And then I move it round. Let me show you to explain. So I start off with top to bottom, bottom to top. Now I move round and I move that core to the bottom again and hold it loosely. I do my top to bottom and I do my bottom to top, making sure that the core, the moves go on either side of the core. Now at this stage, it looks wrong. Don't worry, it's not. So I move on round. So my rhythm is core to the bottom, top to bottom on the right hand side of the core, bottom to top 
on the left hand side of the core. Rotate, core to the bottom, top to bottom on the right hand side of the core, bottom to top on the left hand side of the core. Rotate, core to the bottom. Now as I perform these moves, the core is becoming trapped in the middle. Rotate, core to the bottom. And you can see that the, core, the braid is forming around the core. And all you need to make sure is that those moves are happening on either side of that core and that each time you move your core to the bottom and then perform your regular moves. Now, adding beads, it's absolutely the same as you're used to. And all you need to do is make sure that all the time you're keeping that core in between those two moves. So, I drop my bead in. And the core is on the left hand side. And now on the other side, I drop my bead in and the core is on the right hand side. So again, core to the bottom, perform my moves. Top to bottom. Bottom to top. Core to the bottom. Top to bottom. Oh, that one didn't want to go in. Bottom to top. And so forth. And you'll soon find that if you make it part of your rhythm, you don't forget to move that cord. Because if you do, it will pop out at the side of the braid. And at the end of the braid, you just do a little section without beads and remove your braid from the disc, tighten it or not, just as you would normally. But what you will have is a lovely, firm braid. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you found that useful. And now, no excuse for squishy braids. They're all going to be nice and firm. If you found this tip useful and would like to see other things, the best thing is to subscribe to my channel. Then you get notified when I upload more videos. Alternatively, take a peep at my um, website, the prumihimo.com website. It's packed full of interesting information, a blog, tutorials, all sorts of pictures and information about my videos. So until next time, bye.